Hey guys, what's going on? It's Monkle Zonky, and uh, today what we're going to be doing is taking a first look at the RuneScape Behind the Scenes, which was released yesterday. So I'm just going to be going over everything in the Behind the Scenes that I feel is interesting, uh, all the topics actually, and just tell you my thoughts on them, what they might be like, uh, some speculations, and uh, yeah, how useful they are to the game itself. In the background, you're just going to see me doing construction. Uh, I reset an XP counter, and you'll see how much construction XP I got during this video, just if anyone is interested. But don't watch the screen by any means. It's just going to be me doing construction. It's not that interesting at all. So I'm going to try to make this video pretty long. I have regained the right to make videos longer than 15 minutes. So if this video goes over 15 minutes, that's okay. So without further ado, let's get right into the uh, the discussing of the behind the scenes. Um, the first one on the behind the scenes is RuneScape 3 beta program. And I assume this is going to be somewhat like the beta that they had for EOC and the fact that they're going to have separate servers and you can log on with your account and that sort of thing and it won't affect the main game if you drop any items in the beta. Same idea. I'm just assuming I don't know that for a fact. It's just speculation. However, that would make the most sense. So RuneScape 3, the biggest promotions that they're making is first of all it's going to HTML which means the graphics are going to be higher quality and also you won't have to deal with Java anymore because Java is really a very old um, resource to use and HTML is just going to be able to make the graphics look much better much crisper and I already think that the graphics have come so far in RuneScape uh, these days the graphics look so good from when I used to play um, when I first started playing RuneScape this is one of the worst looking games there was out there and uh, it's just really nice to see from a graphical standpoint that this game has come such a long way so members are going to be able to log on to that and uh, we'll be able to see what the first glimpses of RuneScape 3 is like uh, I'm assuming that they're actually going to release uh, at least one of the new skills along with RuneScape 3 because um, earlier in the year they did state that they're going to release the first of the two new skills in the first half of the year and uh, the first half of the year is rapidly closing so I would assume that a new skill is going to be released with RS3 just like a new skill was released with RS2. When RS2 first came out in 2003 I believe it was uh, RuneCrafting was released along with the RuneScape 2 update so I assume that's what it's going to be like and um, some people have been saying like uh, oh they're just changing graphics and it's not going to be that different but um, actually if you remember the transition from RuneScape Classic to RuneScape 2 uh, most of it was the majority of the update was a graphical overhaul and uh, the new skill runecrafting. They didn't really do a whole lot else. Obviously RuneScape, uh, current day RuneScape, uh, even when the graphics were bad, is very different from RuneScape Classic, but maybe Jax will surprise us and make the graphics in the HTML5 version really good, and it might be that same sort of experience again. Anyway, that's just my speculation. Hopefully RuneScape 3 will be a huge success. So. I just gotta scroll down here. Uh, the next update is Dungeoneering Deal Wielding, which is okay. I'm not that excited about it. But also we have the Charm Collector here, which is going to be a Dungeoneering Reward, which is going to cost 100k tokens. So uh, if you have been living under a rock and had no idea that the Charm Collector was coming out, then I highly advise that you go get some tokens and save up and get 100k tokens. So as soon as that Charm Collector comes out, uh, you can buy it. If you have 99 summoning and you're not that's excited about picking up charms um, and using them. Another thing that you're going to be able to do with the charm collector is set it to uh, not pick up the charms, but almost in a bone crusher way, grind them and get a small amount of construct or summoning XP for it. So if you're interested in that, just getting your summoning level up or XP up a little bit past 99, then uh, that's something to look into. So if you don't actually want to collect the charms, you can just set it almost as a bone crusher but for summoning. And with the Dungeoneering dual wielding update, that's just going to make um, you be able to get stuff like primal offhand rapiers or offhand um, daggers, I guess, even. Uh, I did get a primal rapier drop. However, uh, I would rather not use it because in Dungeoneering, I have been using mage for the most part. Uh, mage is pretty beast in Dungeoneering if you have the uh, highest tier staff, which I was lucky enough to get. So uh, that's what I've been using. Honestly, the dungeon and dual wielding is not going to affect me because I really would rather not use two binds on my melee weapon. Uh, I just want to use one bind on that so I can have binds for my range gear and my mage gear in dungeoneering as well. So that's why I'm not too excited about that. However, if you're into the whole offhand thing and you want to spend the time to get uh, two primal rapiers or of something of that like, uh, yeah, you can 
put the time into to do that. Um, the next thing that we got here is uh, Castle Wars and Duel Arena improvements. As far as I can see, the Duel Arena improvement, they said they're going to make the area smaller and um, just kind of a graphical rework. I can't see what's really wrong with the Duel Arena. It doesn't have a very complicated purpose and it fulfills that purpose well, so I imagine they're probably not going to make too much of a gameplay standpoint change to the Duel Arena. It's mostly going to be graphical. They did say they're going to make the area smaller. Um, because at the moment the dual arena is pretty big, which I never thought was completely necessary. But they also said um, no one's going to be kicked out of the dual arena. They are going to make an instanced world if the smaller dual arena space is already filled with players. So that is pretty useful because um, if you've ever gone staking before at peak times, sometimes uh, it's very hard to get into the arena itself to stake because it always says the arena is full. So saying that there's going to be actually an instanced world uh, made for duelers when the duel arena is full. That's really nice to know because uh, stakers won't have to get annoyed any longer, I suppose. Um, and the Castle Wars improvements, these sound actually really good. Uh, first of all, they said they're changing the comp cape requirement. Uh, I imagine they're going to be nerfing it a bit because, let's be honest, 5,000 Castle Wars games, that's about six months of gameplay. Not six months of time to get it, but about six months of gameplay or something like that. I don't know. It might be less. I worked it out one day and I I thought it would take like eight months if you played a certain amount of hours a day. Uh, something like that. But I always thought that was a bit much for Castle Wars, even for a trend completionist. So uh, they most likely will be um, changing that so it's not so hard to get the trim completionist requirement. And of course um, the trim completionist players might complain, but in all honesty, there isn't a whole lot of trim completionist players in the game. Um, I may be wrong, but I think there's about 100 or so at the moment. I, I actually looked up how many trim completionist players there were a couple months ago, and there was not very many. And um, there's, I would highly suspect that there's a lot more people that want to get the trim completionist cape than players that already have the trim completionist cape. So in that regard, I think this is definitely a good thing that they're making the trim completionist cape not such a grind to get. Uh, also, they're going to be adding, they said, uh, consumable item rewards. Uh, I assume that's probably going to be in the way of either XP or um, possibly some monetary value. For example, if you play Soul Wars, you can choose to spend your zeal on uh, random items, and it'll give you, like, dragon bones and uh, ores and logs and that sort of thing from Soul Wars if you want to. Uh, it's not a very good idea because it's much better to just spend your points on XP in Soul Wars. Uh, however, I think this is just a great thing because um, Castle Wars is a very old minigame, and for how much time it takes, really, to get tickets, uh, it takes a very long time, and the only reward is uh, cosmetic armor. I'm aware that the armor does have stats, however, the Castle Wars armor stats are pretty terrible compared to most other armors, so... Uh, in essence, it is really just cosmetic armor. So um, that's really nice that they're finally improving that because maybe people will actually want to do Castle Wars again. In these days, people don't want to play a mini game unless there's a good reason to. And cosmetic armor, in my opinion, is not a good reason to. So um, at the moment, if you think from an X XP worth your time, like the time you put in, is it worth it XP wise or money wise? Uh, at the moment, uh, Castle Wars is not worth that in any regards other than if you're going for the trimmed, complete, trimmed completionist cape, then it's worth playing, but um, if you're just a normal player that has no intention of getting the trimmed completionist cape, Castle Wars is not worth playing at all. There's really no rewards that can benefit you whatsoever. So I'm really happy to hear that. They also said you can get silver tokens, which you will get every game, regardless if you win or lose, and these can be spent on the consumable items. And then it said gold tokens, which can be spent on better rewards if you win. So um, possibly those gold tokens will be, be able to spend on the armors, because uh, the, the highest tier Castle Wars armor, I cannot remember the name of it right now, but it actually does look really cool. And I don't think they're just going to remove that from the game. They'll probably still have that as a reward that you can get. Um, so maybe those gold tokens will be a way to get that uh, Castle Wars armor of old. That's just uh, my thoughts on that. Um, anyway, they also said they're going to graphically update Castle Wars so it's going to look a lot better, and you can now wear helms in the arena, which I never really saw the point of wearing hoods anyway. If you're wearing a cape, why would you need to wear a hood? Because you can clearly tell what team you're on just from the cape, but um, that's okay. They're now adding hoods, or they're now adding the ability to wear helms in the Castle Wars arena, and also there is a screenshot here. I'm just looking at the RuneScape post on their website of the... Um, 
the behind the scenes and the screenshot here does look pretty cool it looks it's just the typical runescape style of graphics kind of a uh, dark stone walls and that sort of thing but it does look pretty good from the screenshot because castle wars obviously is very old it's still a fun mini game i used to play it back when i wasn't too concerned about xp i played a little bit of castle wars and i enjoyed it but um it's just nice that they're making it much more worthwhile now i'm pretty excited about that i'll definitely go and try out some castle wars sometime when it when it releases uh, i'll get i'll get over there sometime and the next update that we have is hunter charms and um Hopefully Jagus does a good job on this. I'm not so sure because when they first released Charm Sprites, uh, for everyone that don't know, for everyone that does not know, uh, they are kind of hyped up to be a way to get charms without having to train combat. Uh, however, if you ever went to Charm Sprites, I actually went there once to do a daily challenge and it was one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. They are extremely annoying to catch and the XP is terrible and the charms per hour is terrible and just everything at the charm sprites is terrible and the worst thing about it is you can actually get charm sprites as a daily challenge and that was just the worst because it was a waste of a daily challenge. There was no way I was going to do that more than once. It was just awful. Everything about Charm Sprites was awful, but they said they're making them easier to see and easier to catch, which is a huge plus because um, the Charm Sprites were really, li really little, and um, since the trees have been updated in RuneScape graphically, uh, the trees really got in the way and it made it really hard to click on the Charm Sprites, um, and it just made them a huge pain to hunt, and also they said they're buffing the XP and charms that you can get from the minigame as well, which is great because the XP was so bad. Uh, it was like 50k XP an hour or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. I worked it out when I actually did a video uh, what the XP rates were and the charms rates were and it was just all terrible. So uh, hopefully Jagus makes it actually worthwhile. So possibly people that want to get some Hunter XP but um, for example if you train Slayer and EOC at the moment uh, you will get 99 Slayer before you have enough charms for 99 summoning. And for people that want to be efficient, for example, let's just say hypothetically charm sprites are worth doing hunter XP wise. Uh, people will be able to, that already got 99 Slayer but don't have enough charms for 99 summoning and want to be efficient and work on a max cape could possibly go to charm sprites, train their hunter there, get a little bit of charms on the way since they need the charms anyway. Uh, that's just my thoughts. I thought that I think that would be a pretty cool way. I hope they don't make it insanely fast XP. For example, if they make hunter charms like 200k XP an hour, um, it, that would make it nearly as fast as Draconic Jadinkos. And I don't really want a whole bunch of people leaving Draconic Jadinkos and training at uh, charm sprites. It just it feels weird and wrong. But um, we'll see how that happens. It might just be worth it for your time if you don't have 99 summoning or hunter and you really need to train both. So uh, scrolling down here, it says EOC update. Now this one is probably the most useful update the entire month I would say especially if you like the PVM uh, first of all they're buffing stats um, not that you can get higher stats but just that your stats affect your damage more because at the moment at God Wars um, even if you're maxed melee you can be crashed by someone with 90 stats even if you're 99 all stats uh, if they have the same gear as you and they can crash you rather easily which is weird because you have about three times as much XP in your melee skills as they do and yet they can hit nearly as good as you can it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense but they are buffing that so now um, they're not changing the stats themselves but the higher your levels are the more they will affect so I'm just they're going to have a greater amount of uh, damage, for example, if you're 99 strength, or a greater amount of accuracy if you're 99 attack, and your stats are just going to help you in combat a lot more than they used to, because it used to be all about weapon stats. Really, your weapon was the only thing that determined how well you could hit or how al accurate you are. Also, uh, potions and prayers are being boosted, so turmoil is going to affect your combat a lot more. I've found that turmoil and overloads, um, even though they were heavily nerfed when EOC came out, they do already affect your combat quite a lot. You can definitely tell the difference if you're uh, training unpotted or training with turmoil and overloads activated. Um, they don't make nearly as big a difference as they did before EOC, but they do make a difference. And they're just buffing that, so now you're going to notice higher hits and more accuracy if you have turmoil on or if you have overloads on, which is good because torsals, um, they got down to 15k each. And I've been planning Torstals lately with farming, and I'm assuming after this update, Torstals are going to rise a lot uh, because of overloads. So I'm not going to say that a lot, but overloads are getting buffed, 
And the only reason that uh, Torstals crashed was because overloads were so bad. So that just might be something for you guys to look into. You might want to start planting Torstals now. I'm not going to say buy Torstals from the GE and flip them because I don't know if that's if they're really going to raise that much or if you, even if they're going to raise at all. I do not know that for a fact, so uh, don't take my word on that. But I've just started to plant Torstals as a herb, and I'm going to sell them after the update. I make money either way, so hopefully this will be a good way for me to make a bit of money. Um, also, turmoil is just nice as it helps a lot more because at the moment, uh, prayer is still very worth training, but not for turmoil, really only for soul split because soul split is just such a useful prayer for PVM. And uh, most people were training their prayer for soul split. I saw a couple progress videos on EOC and they're like, I'm training my prayer to 92. And it's weird because in the old day, in the old days, people were always trying to get 95 for turmoil, and now people are just aiming for 92. They don't even really care about 95. Um, so Soul Split is very useful, but now Turmoil is going to be pretty good as well for PVM, I suppose. Um, I hopefully, hopefully they fix the prayer drain a little bit because um, at the moment, for example, when you want to go to Glacors, unless you have the Penance Aura, it's impossible to use Turmoil because you just can't stay there for very long because it drains your prayer so fast if you have both Turmoil and Soul Split activated at the same time. Um, I know it always drained your prayer pretty fast. Uh, as long as turmoil and soul split have been in the game, but it never used to be this severe. So um, maybe they could possibly nerf the prayer drain on turmoil and soul split a little bit. I don't know if that's going to happen. And the next update that we're getting into, which a lot of people might be really excited about, is Private God Wars Dungeon. I know it's insane, absolutely crazy. Uh, looks like we're going over 15 minutes, guys. So you're going to be in for a long video. Hopefully, everyone's up for that. But anyway, Private God Wars Dungeon. Um, you're going to be able to apparently pay um, a fee to have your own Private God Wars area. I don't know if this is going to be a set fee. For example, you go in there and you pay like uh, 500k and you get to kill uh, bandos for as long as you want. Or if it's going to be like a recurring fee, for example, like pay 20k per kill. Uh, I don't know. I hope I hope it's a set fee because that means it's not going to be worth it for lower level players. Um, but for higher level players, for example, if you have Dragors and Pack Yak and good armor, you're going to be able to camp there for really as long as you want. So the longer you camp there, the more worth it is. I don't imagine that the fee is going to be too extreme because Jax really seems to underestimate players' skills. Uh, they always seem to. They always seem to think that players are not as good as at PVM that as we actually are. So um, I imagine if you're really good at camping God Wars and you can stay there for a large amount of kills, it's going to be very worth it to get these private spots because you won't be able to be crashed. They also said that they're going to have upgraded versions of Bandos and I think all the all the God Wars bosses, not just Bandos. But they said that they're going to be using the special attacks that they did during the World Wakes quest. For example, if you fought Armadil during the World Wakes quest, uh, Armadil used these little blue and green cyclones things that hit a lot of damage if you were touched by them. So they're going to be using the upgraded attacks, and they're also going to have much higher stats, but they said the loot is going to be much better. Uh, whether that means new items, um, I really hope there's not new items, because we already have so many armors in this game, it's kind of ridiculous and it's not really a good thing when you have this many varieties of armors uh, but they did say the loot is going to be better so possibly that's better drop rates um, in return for a higher difficulty of killing and I think that would be kind of nice because um, you were never able to camp God Wars for hours and hours on end uh, however I'm one of those people who doesn't mind not being able to stay there for very long. Like, for example, if I go into one of these hard God War bosses areas and can only do uh, 20 kills instead of 100 kills there, uh, but in return get a much higher drop rate, I would think that's worth it because I do not have a very high attention span. So if I go a long time at a boss and don't get a drop, I get angry and I get bored and I want to leave and uh, I just get really demotivated. Um, and I also don't like camping at God Wars for a long time. It's just, it's not that interesting. Uh, I don't think it's because there's no challenge, because I'm not very good at PVM, and I play on a very laggy computer, and if it was too challenging, I wouldn't enjoy that either. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that probably would enjoy the challenge. They would enjoy having to use more food. I don't imagine that it's going to be two more. It's probably going to be, like, just um, the difference between you didn't used to have, used to have, used to used to use food at God Wars at all to now you're going to need to use some food. Uh, I imagine it's not going to be too more, too much more extreme than that, but um, still at the same time, I'm kind of excited for that. I really don't need the money from God Wars. I have 
plenty of money to max out and more. I don't need any money at the moment, but I am definitely going to go there um, on release and check out those private areas and try to get myself to one of those upgraded bosses and fight them and, uh, yeah, see what we get. And I'll definitely make a video for, for um, that up update for you guys when it does come out. So, uh, Hopefully you are all excited for that. Um, I'm somewhat excited for Private God Wars. I know a whole lot of people are going to be so pumped for that because um, I, for one, used to ask Jagex for Private God Wars on the forums all the time. I used to post forum posts there like, hey, make some Private God Wars. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of other people that did too because no one likes getting crashed. And it is so hard to do Bandos unless you have max gear, which I do at the moment, but I never used to. Um, it was so hard to do Bandos without getting crashed like immediately. So... I think that's a really good thing, actually. And Bandos Armor, it's not worth a whole lot at the moment anyway, so I don't think this should affect prices too much. Um, okay, so the next edition, and I think this is the last edition in the behind-the-scenes, is XP Editions. And this is just a, a kind of nice thing. It's not really that big of an update, but it, it says that you're they're going to add a very marginal amounts of XP to random items things, uh, random processes in the game that should have always given XP. For example, uh, if you plant seeds in a plant pot, or if you mix a herb into a vial of water to make an unfinished potion, you're going to get a very small amount of XP for that. It's not going to be very much. I will I will say that for a fact. I know it's not going to be very much XP, So, but um, now for people that are really, really cheap and don't mind spending hours and hours to train herb lore, and uh, you will be able to make unfinished potions and get a little bit of XP for it and also make some money because, um, well, uh, making unfinished potions is a, a kind of decent way to make money. You can make a little bit of money from doing it. Uh, so now you'll be able to do that and make uh, get a little bit of XP along the way. So I think that's always a very nice thing. It's not a big update. It's just one of those updates that you look at it and you're like, oh, that's nice. That sounds kind of useful. Uh, I'm going to enjoy that one day because one day you will be filling plant pots with seeds and you'll get a little bit of XP for it and you're like, oh, that's kind of nice. I'm getting some farming XP. So obviously it's not going to be very much XP. It's not going to make a huge difference. But uh, yeah, that is about all for the behind the scenes. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is people have been telling me that you can do troll invasion every week now. Uh, I don't know how true that is. Um, I have not seen anywhere on the forums that says evidence of this. However, I'm just going to take people's word for it. Maybe uh, RuneScape released a video on their YouTube channel and said that you can do Troll Invasion every week. I'm not sure exactly what happened. But um, if that is true, uh, I'm going to just take the benefit of the doubt and believe the people that have been telling me this because I want Troll Invasion to happen every week because at the moment I get 70,000 XP uh, in agility for Troll Invasion. Uh, possibly even more because I, I leveled since the last time that I used a Troll Invasion book. So that means I'm going to be getting pretty good XP every week from Troll Invasion. That's just going to really help me get um, 99 agility faster and easier. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, hopefully you all are too. Anyway, I really need to end this video now. So we went on for 23 minutes and I gained 200k construction XP, which makes this uh, nearly 600k construction XP an hour. So it is very fast, and uh, I really do enjoy construction. I haven't been clicking as fast as possible. When I was doing this last night, I was going ham and just clicking like crazy and getting insane XP. I haven't been doing that right now because I am very tired, and I just woke up not too long ago, and I'm just getting into the scapes today. So anyway, um, thanks for watching, everyone. If you stay to the end, uh, be fr feel free to tell me in the comments that you stayed to the end, and also just like let me know um, what interest you in the updates. Uh, I'm going to say the one that interests me by far the most is the uh, when they're buffing the stats to make them more useful and buffing uh, turmoil and overloads to make them more useful for, useful for combat. Uh, that's by far the most interesting one to me. I think for most people it will probably be the private god wars, but just let me know which one is the most interesting. And also um, join my clan or friends chat. It is Munkle Zunky. I'm not in there right now because I'm making a video and I'm also training construction and that's just a bad combination. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone and I hope that you enjoyed this uh, little vlog and I'll be I will upload a Road to Max Kit video later today. I hope you all go check that one out. Um, it should be a great video, and I know a lot of people have been enjoying that. So make sure to watch my Road to Max Cape later today, and I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, farewell.